Welcome back again. Just before the break, I was on the topic of how the Dharma can be expressed by words, but in fact it really needs to be put into practice if we want to fully understand the meaning. So let's continue on this point. As we talk about the importance of putting the Noble Eightfold Path into practice, there is a difference between knowing this and knowing how, or knowing that, or knowing how. Say, for example, if you were just to go around and tell people that in order to save a drowning person, all you need to do is jump into the pool, do this and do that, etc., then it doesn't really mean that you, can re you know really how to save a person. Another example is, imagine if you were just to talk about how you know how to drive, you can say that in order to drive a car, all I need to do is put my foot on the pedal and push then the car will move. But does this mean you can drive the car? No. You have to actually put yourself into the driver's seat and have a feel about the gadgets and to really gain control of the, all the things, the handles and the brakes and the pedals in order to know whether you can really drive a car or not. So this is similar to the practice of the Eightful Noble Paths. We talk about how wonderful it is but you will never really understood how great it is and how helpful it is to your life unless you put it into practice and let it become a part of your life. Then that's what makes it different. The Noble Eightfold Path is basically a guide to living, so it must be practiced and experienced. So how do we go about practicing and experiencing the, the Noble Eightfold Path? For example, if we know that in order to protect our faith in Buddhism, no, no matter what difficult um, times that, or problems we come across, and if we vow to never shatter our, our, our faith in this religion, then in a way we're practicing right views. Or whenever we think about, or what we think about, or what we contemplate, it should be coherent, or it should adhere to the theory of what the Buddha taught, which is the Dharma. When we do this, we're actually practicing right thought. When we engage in a conversation with others, if we are always mindful of the importance of saying kind and um, encouraging or generous words, then we are in a way practicing um, right speech because this way we fill others with confidence and joy by the things we say. When, we're, when our behavior corresponds to morality and virtue, and also when we try to stop ourselves from hurting other people or making other people upset by the things that we do for our own benefits. Or say sometimes we try to be charitable, charitable and offer our helping hand to those who are in need. Or say we try to actively do good and avoid bad or evil actions. Other times we could try to remain calm and try to tackle our problems in life with our wisdom and try to take time to think this through, then all these things represent the fact that we are practicing the Noble Eightfold Paths into our, li into our daily lives. The Noble Eightfold Paths consists of the essence of faith and ethics. So basically, again, it is a, ba it is a gateway to Buddhahood. It is also the guideline us as human beings should follow in our everyday life. So by observing the Noble Eightfold Path, we should be able to get rid of suffering and ignorance. And of course, eventually we will lead to a pure and happy life. So this is a true ethical living in Buddhism. After we have talked about this, was it too much for you to understand? Well, if you didn't catch many of the points, let's go through what we've talked about again, the Eightfold Noble Paths. The Noble Eightfold Paths, or the Eightfold Noble Paths, are paths that lead to enlightenment. Again, it is the ethical guidelines for us as Buddhists to practice in our daily lives. The first item of the Noble Eightfold Paths is right views. And again, it means correct views and understanding. It means to change for the better. And it also means to get rid of our bad habits and continue to question ourselves about what is, what is wrong with ourselves and change. Second is right thought. Right thought, again, it also means right intentions or right thinking. 
So we try to teach ourselves to think more about compassion, kindness, or other th thoughts that are pure rather than gossip or things that could create harm to other people. Third is right speech. By using righteous, truthful, and morally correct speech, we try to bring joy, uh, joy and confidence and of course happiness to the lives of other people. So therefore we can see the benefit of speaking kind words or gentle words or always encourage other people with the words we say. And this also involves right speech means saying the right thing the right way at the right time. Because if you don't, when either the right time or the right way or the right place is not present, then it doesn't constitute right speech. Fourth is right action. Right action means behaviors that are pure. And for example, we've talked about the three items of the five precepts which involve our actions. These include not killing, not stealing, or not to commit sexual misconduct. All of the things are the ways that we try to stop what we do to uh, basically stop doing things that will create harm to other people. The fifth of the eightfold, the noble eightfold paths is basically it means a proper occupation, a proper job basically. It is a proper way to, for us to make a living, to earn our money, to make, our, make a living. So it involves works that do not harm others. So once again, these are the things that include operating a gambling house, a brothel, a slaughterhouse, or doing things by selling drugs to other people that will hurt other people's health or body. The sixth is right progress. This means changing for the better. We put our efforts into making changes that will make ourselves and of course our world and the people around us much better. So this also includes becoming wiser. Once again, we make the right progress to improve ourselves by, by say, for example, by correcting at least one mistake that we are uh, one thing that is wrong with us each day. Or we promise ourselves that we'll, want, we'll learn one thing every day or even one bit of Dharma every day. And once all this progress come together, it will lead us to achieving great things. The seventh is right mind. Right mind here means maintaining a truthful mind, a mind that is clear and pure, a mind that is not obscured by the three poisons. And let me remind you again, the three poisons are anger, hatred, and ignorance. If our mind is covered up by the three poisons, then it stops us by seeing the truth and seeing what is seeing the, the best things about this world clearly. So once again, we need to wipe this away and make sure that our mind is not covered up by the three poisons. The final item of the Noble Eightfold Paths is right concentration. Here, right concentration helps us to learn to meditate and to actually learn how we can benefit from meditation. Some of the benefits we have, which we have just gone through before include that we'll live a healthier life and the fact that we're able to concentrate and we'll find a, a better ability to focus on what we're doing. And lastly, we are able to foster better and helpful um, be social behavior. So these eight items, or what we call the Noble Eightfold Paths, give us a direction to how we can, as Buddhists, live healthy, wise, calm and collected lives. As we've talked about before, Buddhist practices are based on morality, meditation, and wisdom. And while we're practicing this, let's re uh, revise again once how the Noble Eightfold Paths can be incorporated into these three items. Once again, into morality, meditation, and wisdom. So remember, right speech together with right action, right work, and right progress help us improve morally while right views, right thoughts, and right mind help us become wiser and gain more wisdom. While right concentration here learn, um, help us learn to focus and learn to practice meditation. So here, in conclusion, 
The Noble Eightfold Path is intended to be a guide for all aspects of our lives. So here, the Noble Eightfold Path must be implemented into our daily lives before we actually realize how rich and how wonderful it is to us. And of course, once again, before, how, before we fully understand the teachings that are presented into these eight no, Eightfold Noble Paths, if this is practiced with diligence, the Noble Eightfold Paths will lead to the most wondrous understanding. So no one who practices it for long can possibly doubt the power and wisdom of the Noble Eightfold Paths. So the Noble Eightfold Paths is based on morality, belief, and wisdom. It is a perfect guide to all the teachings presented by the Buddha. So diligent practice of the Noble Eightfold Paths, of course, will ultimately lead to enlightenment. So we'll stop here today. Join us next week.